Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk, brought to you by Detroit Lions on the Prowl. We're going to go in depth again into the draft and a couple more quarterbacks that the Lions may select in the first round. We've got a bunch of news and rumors today. We've got your comment cards, question of the day, and the dessert with Kurt. And speaking of Kurt, let's bring Kurt in right now, my man. How you doing today? Hey, what up, though, people? Welcome to the show. You know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl. You're home. Of Detroit Lions news. Join the family. Subscribe to the channel. Join us weekdays, 11 o'clock Eastern time every morning for the premieres right here on our channel. Join the chat. Chat up with us live. Do a super chat. So get your content and your questions right up front where you want them to be. Uh, comment on the videos. Like the video. Share the videos. All of this helps us get this content to more Alliance fans just like yourself. And one more thing, hit the notification bell so you know when you're getting fresh content from us right here on Detroit Alliance on the Prowl. Now let's get this thing started right, right now. now. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, people. It's time to get into this main course. Two quarterbacks coming out in the draft. And Jim, you are first to profile Mr. Kyle Trask out of University of Florida. Kyle Trask is 22 years old. You mentioned he's out of Florida. He's six foot five, 240 pounds. Where do they grow these people? I mean, <laughs> everyone we've profiled so far is six, what, six, three and above? Something yeah, like that. six, three, six, two and above, and just huge. <laughs> huge kids. Oh, um, if the lions select Trask and he's no good, they're going to start calling him trash. So I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm that that's an issue already. I'm just <laughs> letting you know, <laughs> Kyle Trask did not start any games in his high school after freshman year. Instead, mm -hmm. he played backup, uh, to now Miami hurricanes quarterback, Eric King, dear King. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was still able to commit to Florida despite mm -hmm. being a second string for the final three years, mm -hmm. 2017 Trask did not see any action in his first two years at Florida. Yeah. He was originally intended to compete with Felipe Franks for mm -hmm. the starting job in 2017, but mm -hmm. suffered an injury, which cost him the season. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy's got lions written all over him. Uh, 2018, <laughs> he played four games as a backup to Felipe Franks, mm -hmm. completing 14 out of 22 passes for 162 yards and a touchdown. His season came to an end after he again injured his foot in practice. This guy's perfect. You could just see mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the guy right here. 2019, mm -hmm. he entered his junior year and again as a backup to Franks. After Franks was injured, Trash took over as the starter, making his first start since his freshman year of high school. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we, this is the guy I got. This is, this is it. Mm -hmm. Uh, led his team to victory over Virginia in the Orange Bowl. Yay. Mm -hmm. All right. He did something. That's great. 2020 okay. <laughs> in the Gators' first game of 2020 versus Ole Miss, Trask eclipsed his own record for passing for 416 yards and six touchdowns. That's impressive. Also set an all time record for for yards in a conference game in the process midway through the season trash threw for 474 yards and four touchdowns against then number four georgia becoming mm -hmm. the first quarterback in sec history to four, throw four touchdowns in five consecutive games after the season continued, Trask continued to put up record-setting numbers as he became the favorite to win the Heisman. On December 12th, 2020, Trask set the – I almost said trash. I'm sorry. Yeah. Set the UF single-season touchdown passing record with his 40th of the year. Trask and the Gators would go on to lose in the uh, Cotton Bowl. Yeah. To, he was uh, a second-team All-SEC in 2020, mm -hmm. Heisman Trophy finalist. Uh FBS passing yards and touchdown leaders. Mm -hmm. Trask led the nation in passing yards per game at 375, putting him on pace for the third highest season average in SEC history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and only Kentucky's Tim Couch, and we all know how that worked out. And mm -hmm. LSU Joe Burrow, which uh, wait and see on him. He got hurt again. Or he mm -hmm. got hurt this year. Trask mm -hmm. also ranks fifth nationally in passer rating. That's pretty good. We got a pretty good season. Think about this guy. I, I'm 
That's um, absurd. I, I'm not. To I'm not least. totally sold on Kyle Trask. I mean, he had a. Uh, I mean, basically, he has a small sample size. I mean, this year was the only year you can really focus on what he has achieved um, as a quarterback. You know, De'Aaron King. You know, is a talented quarterback. So he sat behind him. Sat behind Franks down there at Florida, who I think he, he transferred to Arkansas, I believe. I don't mm-hmm. remember where, where Franks um, transferred to, but um, the jury still out. I mean, I mean, he had an incredible season. So does that transfer into success at the NFL level? Not particularly. Uh, I'll put like this. Florida quarterbacks haven't fared too well in the NFL. You're right Just about ask, that. Ask Tim right Tebow. You know? Yeah. Yeah, ask Tim Tebow. But uh, here's my take on on Trask. There's a lot of people that really like this kid. Mm-hmm. And I've heard this name over and over and over and had no research mm-hmm. done on him. And after after looking at this, uh, mm-hmm. I would put a put a, a no, a big time no on this guy. Yeah. No way would we, I want him being. We have to look at the, the medicals no coming way. back from the combine. It's going to be key to look at where we would want to, where anyone, not just the Lions, would want to draft mm-hmm. him uh, for the upcoming uh, 2021 draft. So. The, yeah. his medicals and, and just, just, you know, those things are going to have to come back. And yeah. One more, a, yeah. One more thing on him the that, lions are famous for drafting talent with injury. Like when he's healthy, when true. he's healthy, joins, mm-hmm. joins the uh, all-star team of Ezekiel Ansa, mm-hmm. uh Deshaun hand, um, <laughs> you know, and that Jeff Okuda, <laughs> Jeff Okuda. And what's the other guy's name? Um, Austin Bryant. Austin Bryant. That was the guy I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, so he does. I, I, it's a hard no on for me. It's yeah, I, I'm not no. sold on him. I'm not sold on him as well. I mean, later rounds, if he's still available, yeah. But in the first round, no. Nah. No. No. Oh, uh, what do you got up, Mac Jones? All right, Mr. Mac Jones, return of the Mac. Okay, he is 22 years old. He's out of the Crimson Tide University of Alabama. His parents are Gordon and Holly, uh, brother Will, uh, sister Sarah Jane. That's some good old Southern names right there for you. Six foot three, 214 another pounds, big another big guy. <laughs> All right, 2017, he originally committed to the University of Kentucky, but Jones accepted the scholarship offer from the Crimson Tide Head coach himself, Nick Saban, and signed with the University of Alabama. Jones arrived in Tuscaloosa as an early enrollee, but was redshirted uh, for his freshman season in 2017. Probably couldn't get on the field. Yeah, some pretty good quarterbacks. Uh, to yeah. uh, to a of Valoa, and you had um, um, Jalen Hurts on the team at that time. So he wasn't yep. going to get on the field no. back then anyway. Not that, day, not that time. No. <laughs> All right, so in the 2018 season, Jones appeared in 14 of the Crimson's 15 games, mostly as a holder on special teams. Jones added his name uh, to the Alabama record book with a 94-yard touchdown pass to Jalen Waddle, the second longest in school history. Now moving up to 2019, he served as a starting quarterback. That was his first year as a starter. Uh, in the second half of the 2019 season, after two after Tua Tungvaloa suffered a season-ending hip injury, Joe made four starts for the Crimson Tide, beating Arkansas, Western Carolina. Hmm. Okay, mm. uh, before failing to Auburn in the Iron Bowl, despite throwing for four touchdowns for 335 yards, Jones led Alabama to a 35 to 16 win over <sighs> Michigan in the Citrus Bowl. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, and Jones <laughs> finished, <laughs> finished 2019 with 14 touchdown passes for 1500 yards in 11 games. Now, moving on, 2020, he became the full time starter. Um, passed for over 4,000 yards with 36 touchdowns and a 77 percent precision, uh, uh, completion rate. All right, on, um, January the 1st, 2021, um, Crimson uh, Jones had the Crimson Tide to a 31-14 victory with four touchdowns against Notre Dame, uh, the Fighting Iris in the Rose Bowl. He completed 83% of his passes and threw for 297 yards. Devontae Smith, uh, his favorite receiver, caught three touchdowns and picked up 130 yards receiving Smith. Also became a Heisman finalist before eventually winning the award. 
you know, that's good. It's good to have some good big name receivers. And Devontae Smith is the right now is the biggest name. Yeah. And, and he's Matt, mentioned at our seventh, our seventh overall pick. I would not yeah. do that. I, that would not be my choice, but that, uh, he's mentioned that, that be, number seven pick. That would be the Matt Millen special right there. Yes, All right. Would. So <laughs> looking at some of his career highlights, 2020 was the SEC Scholar of the Year Award, 2020, uh, 20 All American. 2020 Johnny United's Golden Arm Award winner, 2020 Davey O'Brien Award winner, uh, first team all SEC, SEC champion. And here is something, man, that boy Chris be killing on the on the research, not an award. On November 3rd of 2017, this may be another reason why he, you know, during his red shirt time, he was charged with a DUI after getting into an accident early in the morning. It was a single car accident. No one was hurt. And Jones was suspended for one game by the Crimson Tide. Boy, I do Sounds not more want, easy. I, don't want, I don't know what Chris doing my background check. Good. Night. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, you know, what, that's though, kind of a minor thing. Yeah, I that's a, you know, what, though, things happen. I mean, it's a kid. He kind of moved on from it. I mean, think about this 2017, he probably was 18, 19 years old. So, eh. You know, things happen. He's learned from it. You know, it does it excuse the underage drinking and, you know, get into a car accident, getting behind the wheel. Um, no, but it, you can move on from that. You were a kid. He, he can peek and bounce back from that. As long as it's not a, a, a uh, what do you call that? A recurring. You haven't heard anything bad right, since, about him yeah. since then. So he pretty much learned his lesson and moved on with his life. Hoping so. Uh, yeah. These are the five quarterbacks that we did for the first round mm -hmm. um, for the first top top 10 top 20 picks mm -hmm. uh so we're going to move on on monday and we're going to start some, with some defensive players that yeah. we're going to profile so that you guys can get a full range of the of the people that will be available for pick seven and mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to attempt to do for over the next week is get yeah. all the possibilities for you deep mm -hmm. dive into each player i like mac jones actually i i mm -hmm. like him better than trask right now of course um mm -hmm. because of the injury situation and stuff like true that. I just yeah. I don't like medicals. I just yeah. don't. He's he's been pretty sturdy at at uh, at Alabama. You yeah, know, haven't heard any injuries. Right. You know, it just was hard for him to get on the field with you know playing behind Hurts and uh, and Tua uh, Tua Tagovailoa when he first got to uh, to Alabama. But once he did, he did well. The mm -hmm. only thing I got to say is he had his Calvin Johnson type of a, you know, person. I'm not going to say mm -hmm. Calvin Johnson. I don't want to, I don't want to make that comparison, but what no. I'm saying is he had a very good wide receiver uh, and that really helps you out as a quarterback. So, you know, hey, yeah. you never know. But think, think about know. this, think about the season he would have had if he would have had both uh, Waddle and Devonte Smith. Oof. Holy cow. Ooh wee. Wow. Yeah, buddy. That would have been something terrible. So All right, these, man. These things, these, uh, <laughs> yeah. these quarterbacks that we went through, we went mm -hmm. through five of them so far, guys. And I just want to know in the comments, what do you think about that? But the bigger, mm -hmm. the bigger question comes later. And we're talking, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about Matthew Stafford a little mm -hmm. bit just because uh, some things that come up. So in mm -hmm. NFL news and rumors, so our Detroit Lions news and rumors section mm -hmm. um, today, we'll, we'll focus on that a little bit. But right now yeah. we're going to go to your comment cards. And uh, Bob Mullen says a player like Trevor Lawrence is used mm -hmm. to playing with above average talent, playing against average talent. Do you, if you actually watch him throw, his wide receivers improve his numbers. I'm not mm -hmm. saying he won't be good or even great at a quarterback as a quarterback in the NFL, but I don't think it's going to happen in the first few years. Great show. Well, thank you, you know Bob. What? I will say this. I live in ACC country, and I do get a chance to watch a lot of ACC football down here uh, when Michigan not playing. So I will have to agree. They, they play against some subpar talent down here in the, in the ACC uh, really, you have two teams in the ACC right now that are pretty good uh, with a third, with a caveat. You got uh, Clemson, um, Florida State, that's with a kind of a caveat. And you have the University of North Carolina, uh, who is definitely improving with that huge running game that they have down there. And Mac, uh, Mac Brown uh, coming back to the, uh, the Tar Heels. But I will say that it is some subpar talent for ACC football down here. And he's not playing against some really, you know, good talent as far as, but you look at like Jones and Trask where they're playing the SEC um, or even like um, uh, Justin Fields where they're playing to get some primo talent in the big 10 in the SEC. 
That's true. Uh, That's true. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know about. I don't know about that. Yeah, we'll see what Sunshine can do at I mean, the next level. But yeah, I don't we'll think we're gonna. Yeah. I don't I, think I, we're. I don't think we're gonna be anywhere near him. Yeah, as I, a, I'm not saying that he's gonna. I'm not saying he's trash. I'm not saying that he that he's not a good player. I'm just saying that I can. I understand where the comment is coming from. Right. Yeah, I get it. Uh, Eddie Brandenburg says Phil throws ducks. And I don't think he has the arm needed to play in the NFL. You know what, though? I will say this, uh, Mr. Brandenburg. I'm not so for on, on Ohio State quarterbacks either. No, <laughs> I just am not. They they are they are not they don't very they don't transfer very well to the NFL game. I mean, even when they had you know national championship players team. I mean, you look at the guy that just got dismissed from the Washington. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Haskins, I mean, ah, I don't know. I, I just don't get where they're, that program, you know, that system is good for them in college, but coming out, they're not pro ready quarterbacks when they get to the NFL. I agree with you on that. Um, I think that someone needs to sit under Stafford. I don't even care if we pick them seventh or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, someone needs to sit under Stafford for at least a year. I, I, I totally believe that will help mm -hmm. his uh, development. Uh, but King SJ says, I'm all for drafting a, a quarterback to take over for Stafford eventually. But if Mika Parsons is there, uh, still on the board when it's our turn to pick, uh, I find it difficult to pass on him at this point. We will be covering <laughs> Mika Parsons on Monday and Trey mm -hmm. Lance because we forgot him uh, mm -hmm. as a quarterback. So we're going to do that on Monday mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to let you guys know. But, yeah, I'm all for drafting a quarterback, too. Mm -hmm. uh, we really need to fix this defense, but we really need the, the next quarterback in waiting, too. And I, I yeah. think this draft has a, a better talent than the next one coming out uh, quarterback-wise, and it would be wise to take one this year. Yeah, uh, but that Mika Parsons is the – it's a it's got, it definitely fits a need at linebacker because our linebacker oh. core is decimated. Uh, looking at the free agents, we – I mean, the only – linebacker that of that we have under contract next year is um the slow guy uh device uh, so turtle turtle yeah Tavai. turtle Tavai. so that's the only guy we have under contract all our other linebackers that play for the lions this year um and, I, I, and christian jones i'm sorry christian jones Excuse i me. thought yeah because yeah, they gave him an extension yeah he's, he's makes no sense well. whatsoever i'm sorry uh but those two guys are the only guys we have on the contract so it makes sense to go out and, and rebuild that linebacker core we just needed the linebacker core was terrible this year all right next up dakota baird says what up no okay yes a quarterback at seven to sit behind stafford is what we need i agree with that i do um I'm not sure at seven. I don't agree with that. I take them in the first round at number seven, but I do believe that we can take a quarterback um, and you get a guy like Trey Lance who may slip into the second round and he may be that guy that, that, um, that we can pick up uh, early in the draft to, to sit behind Stafford. Uh, Ellen Ambrose says, do you guys like Trey Lance? I don't know much about him. I'm just going to tell you the absolute truth. I don't yeah. know much about the guy. Uh, we will be um, profiling him on Monday. He didn't play that much this season because of the fact that his team really only played a couple games this year. So um, he's supposed to be the second. He's supposed to be better than in college than um, than um, Wentz because he goes to the same school that Wentz went to. Um, uh, so he's supposed to be he's supposed to be that guy who's played that same system as um, Carson Wentz, but is better. So. All right, Bo, 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 last, uh, last one. Last he one. says, Zach Wilson comes with character issues. Uncle owns JetBlue. He is selfish. He's not a leader. He has known to have a all-stuck-up attitude. A know-it-all stuck-up not, not, not a know-it-all attitude. Stuck-up attitude. So he's, so he's a know-it-all and he's stuck-up. All right, he's hmm. not the right guy. Man, that's kind of personal. <laughs> yeah. Um... That's... that's <laughs> I yeah, mean, I like, don't know about that. I mean, I mean he could I mean, be right. right. I mean, did he do something to you? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> actually, kind of like Zach Wilson. Uh, but the thing is, is uh, you know, he's probably my favorite quarterback out of the bunch, uh, mm. just because I don't think we're going to get Trevor Lawrence. I, I don't think we're going to get. Uh, I, I don't know. I, everybody, everybody in the draft has flaws. Everybody. Yeah, everybody does. But I mean, that's not like it's. 
It's not like some, but it sounds I mean, like he uh, he don't like him at all. I mean, bro, I mean, like that sounds personal. <laughs> it, it does. That's okay though. That's what that's what the comments are for. You know, I mean, get, did your, you get, get your did voice you get heard off a JetBlue flight or something? I mean, <laughs> right, get I mean, your I'm voice like, heard. That's what you got. Hey, do. do do what you do. Hey, that's a. Hey, but you know, I, I get it. All right, man. Let's let's get into these news and rumors. Uh, Jim, what you got, man? Uh, NFL rumors, and this is from my friend John Macaroon, and he is on SI All Lions, and it says NFL rumors. Could the Detroit Lions trade for Deshaun Watson? I heard this rumor. I saw this, and it's interesting. I'm not sure because I don't think it'll ever happen. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't think, think so Detroit has enough to go after him like some other teams would. Um, I don't see a. They, I don't they see would a have Stafford to trade. for Deshaun Watson straight, they would have straight to- up. I don't it, it, it will have to be something added to that. Yep. It, it will have to be something bigger because of the longevity of Watson's career, how young he is right now. You have to add something too. Now I like Deshaun Watson. He's a character oh, guy. He's, he's a talented quarterback. Um, you know, dual threat can run throw. Uh, he's, he's a complete package at, at the quarterback position. So would, would um, I trade for him? Absolutely. Absolutely. freaking Lutely. <laughs> I mean, I, but do I... we have, a, do we have enough cachet to get that, to get him? Not because yeah, I know the, the rumors that he wants out of, he wants out of Houston. Well, that depends on who they get to yeah. uh, that also, but uh, yeah, I, would yeah, I do he, it? Yes. Do you think, he's do I think the lions will do it? No. Yeah. He's frustrated from from what I'm hearing. He's frustrated with the leadership in Houston, uh, with the McNair family. Uh, so he's he's a little agitated with the leadership down there in Houston. All right, um, Lions uh, offensive line coach Hank Fraley to interview with the Bengals. Man, that's going to be a tough departure. I like Hank Fraley. I do too. He did an excellent job with that offensive line, even when it was this piece together for a lot of times this season. So it's going to be tough to see him go uh, walk out the door if he actually takes a job with uh the Bengals a uh, report also the Lions defensive line coach Bo Davis taking the job at Texas and mm-hmm. then um Lions quarterback coach Ryan, uh, Sean Ryan leading candidate with the Panthers uh and I think that might be yeah it, it, we're gonna lose a lot of these guys because there's gonna be new guys coming I, in I just gonna that was the writing on the wall the writing was on the wall they knew yeah. that they weren't gonna come back Right. Um, and they were just like, well, let's, let me get out here and, and, and do some job hunting because it's going to be a complete turnover in the coaching staff. And I just don't yep. think a lot of those guys were going to be returning. They're going to bring in their own guys. That's exactly yeah. what it so is. So they were like, hey, man, let's, let me, let's go out here and get some uh, get some job interviews and get, you know, and I understand that as well. You know, you just go out and try to find a job because your job pretty much is over in Detroit. Yep. And this pretty is what much. It is. All right. So uh detroit lions the lions yesterday that probably was the biggest news in the state of michigan yesterday uh is the lions completed their head coach interview with robert salah man you hear this name a lot salah has become the favorite and the popular candidate in detroit because of his serious endorsements by current players and also his local ties if you don't know he's from the dearborn area uh grew up a couple miles from allen park um this year in uh, San Francisco, he dealt with a bunch of injuries, including RR stints for D Ford, Ezekiel Ansan. No uh, we know that, like you know that Nick Bosa. Uh, man, you could have just you could have just said you know Ziggy doing doing Ziggy work. All right, right. Uh, Solomon, <laughs> Solomon Thomas, <laughs> Richard Sherman, among other players. Uh, but he still did a you know he he did a patchwork team. Uh, he he had some you know mediocre you know success with those guys this year but it was a you know his big names were out um there's a lot of news a lot of rumors so you you're gonna hear it here first um there's a lot of reports that the lions have already decided to hire him uh yesterday and it's just a formality of uh, making an announcement you know the lines are kind of tight-lipped yep. about that but uh it looks like from what the reports are saying uh there's all kind of rumors and like his wife made him a a, a cake with the, the honolulu blue icing saying congratulations coach uh mm-hmm. welcome home so there is a lot of speculation out there that robert salah will be the next detroit lions head coach there's there are rumors that he's going to be flying back to michigan within the next day or so to actually meet with the lions in person because the, the interview was virtual so there's a lot of ending when you write out there that he is going to be the next head coach of the Detroit I'm, And I'm going to say this, uh, and maybe it's premature, but I believe mm-hmm. Robert Sly is the next head coach of the Detroit Lions. Heard it here first. 
yeah. maybe not first, but you know, everybody's kind of thinking the same thing, but I do believe he will be the head coach of the Detroit lions. I, I believe that as well. I, I just think that too. I, I just think that it was, it was going to be, uh, he was going to be the leader in the clubhouse regardless. I just, I just think that the lions have focused in on him. I think he was a target. I think it was two guys that were the targets of the lions. And I think it was him and the enemy and, but the enemy has been making really, he's been making the rounds. He's the interview with the jets and the Falcons. So I think that, you know, they wanted to go with the local route and some guy who knows the lions growing up in that Dearborn area, uh, being a fan of the Detroit lions for so long, growing up as a, as a youngster in the Michigan area. Everson Griffin, who <laughs> has been a character here in Detroit, and he is hilarious. Uh, he is a little bit different. <laughs> My, he said he says he's like begging. I'm serious. He's tweeting all the time. Hey, Vikings, if you want me, I'm here. Uh, Vikings, if you want me, I'm here. He wants to return to the Vikings. No desire to come back to Detroit, as far as we've we've seen. Um, what is it? does that say something about our organization again, or is it just because we're going through all the changes? Know, though, I just, I, I will say this, you know, you, you get a veteran player like Everson Griffin. He spent the bulk of his career in Minnesota. I just think he misses it and wants, that's home for him. Yeah. He wants to is. go home. He wants to go home and retire in, 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 the, in, in the purple and go up there in Minnesota. So I, I don't have any ill will towards Everson Griffin. I like, I like him as a player. He's, he, you know, he has some, you know, as far as discipline on the field issues, as far as, you know, false starts and stuff like that. But he wants to get after the quarterback. He, you know, he's a hungry player. Uh, is he the guy he was some years ago? Not, but he still could offer whoever he goes to some good situational pass rush. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, I don't think he's going to be here next year. Nah. I don't know who's going to be here next year. Boy, that defense is going to get an overhaul. I really yeah. believe that. Now, I, okay. I did hear that he made a good, you know, a comment to a good compliment to Matthew Stafford. He, you yes. know, saying that, you know, he had the heart of a warrior, you know, coming and playing, especially that last game where, yep. you know, he was impressed with Matthew Stafford, you know, strapping it up one more time at the end of the season to, to play. He had a heart of a warrior. So, you know, and that's a, that's a really big um, compliment coming from a defensive player because, you know, especially uh, defensive ends talking about quarterbacks, they're not very complimentary of quarterbacks at all. Yeah. Not usually. <laughs> uh, but th the thing is, is I think uh, here's the thing. So we're going to talk about Stafford a little bit. So I want to, mm -hmm. I want to be remiss if I didn't mention this video, mm -hmm. there's a video with him mic'd up. Uh, on the last in the last game mm -hmm. where he's uh, talking to players, trying to get them pumped to win that game. But mm -hmm. after the game, it's kind of like, uh, love everybody, you know, Bevel. Uh, he talks to Decker. He talks mm -hmm. to, you know, what you made reference to. He talked to Everson Griffin. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like a goodbye type of an atmosphere, you know. But is it a goodbye for Stafford or is it a goodbye? Bevel's probably gone. Griffin's gone. Decker's mm -hmm. going to stay. So that was the interesting one to me, but it did feel like it was a goodbye in some ways. Um, do you think maybe Stafford knows that he might be uh, gone? I think, I think he, I think he knows the writing may be on the wall. They may, may, may want to move on from him. Um, I would not like to see that at all, but they, they, you know, they, they may be, it may be some rumors or I'll say this. Do you think Matthew Trafford, Matthew Stafford tries to force a trade in the offseason? Mm, I don't know. I don't think it's his character. I just don't. I don't think so either. But, um, you know, but I'll say this. You can't put anything past anyone. Ain't that the truth? That's the truth. It leads us to our question of the day. But yesterday we had in, the, in our uh, premiere, we had mm -hmm. a lot of lie. We had a lot of Stafford haters yesterday. And uh, mm -hmm. it's like uh, the one question I've always asked them is, who do you replace them with? And usually there is no response. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no good answer. It's just get rid of him for the next guy. And mm -hmm. my response to you guys on that, and to be honest with you, I, I don't hate any of the comments or anything mm -hmm. like that. I just don't agree with you because mm -hmm. it took so long to get a good quarterback here in the first place. Yeah. And blaming Stafford for 12 years of not winning is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. It just is. And, and yeah. I don't want to go too deep down the rabbit hole, but Question of the day for you guys. Who do you think the Lions trade Matthew Stafford in the offseason? That's the question. Do you think he gets traded? 
You know, I mean, we do need extra draft mm-hmm. picks. If it's Deshaun Watson, I, I'm kind of for that. I mean, I like Stafford, but, mm-hmm. you know, if we're going to rebuild, I do understand some of the people that are like, you know, but who's the most popular people in Detroit? The backup goalie in the Red Wings and the backup quarterback in Detroit. Mm-hmm. It's always been that way that the well, first guy is not the good, not the guy and all this other yeah. crap. So. The, well, except for this year, because I don't think a lot, a lot of Lions fans were sold on. Uh, on Chase well, in the, in, uh, I can't yeah. remember his name. It's Elliot something, and he was saying, "Oh yeah, Chase Daniel for next year because we don't want to win anyway." It's like, why don't you want to win? <laughs> well, <laughs> That's really. crazy, but it's true. I mean, it's a tanking thing to get a good quarterback or whatever. Tank, so anyway, tanky. we're at our yeah. my favorite time. It is uh, the dessert with my friend Kurt. All right, now this. Dessert comes from a mad gym itself. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I appreciate you, you know, throwing me a bone. Uh, the Lions have picked the number seven pick. The last time we had the number seven pick in the draft, who did we draft? Uh, number 11, Mr. Uh, Roy Williams. And not the Roy Williams that was the safety out of the University of Texas. It was the other Roy Williams, the wide receiver out of the University of Texas. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, that is crazy to have two guys uh, with the same name go to the same college and, and be really stars on the team. Um, but with the aforementioned Detroit Lion Roy Williams, he has a very good connection with current Hall of Fame finalists Calvin Johnson, who actually was the person and the architect who dubbed Calvin Johnson Megatron. Oh, wow. He was the person who gave him that nickname. That's cool. So you have to give some shout out to my man, Roy Williams, for giving him this nickname. That's amazing. That is a, you know, he was just saying that he said this guy is not human. He's like he's a he's a transformer when he gets on the field. And it had to do with how he his attitude on the field um, was so much different than it was off the field. He was just so, um, you know, calm and collective, you know, just a nice guy off the field. But on the on the field, he was a total beast. Didn't say much on the field, but let his play through the talking. And he's just with the superhuman with the radius catch, the catch radius that he had, his speed and um the things that he could do on the field is the reason why he called him Megatron. That's amazing. That is so amazing. I do want to say this though, when we get into those discussions and arguments and stuff in the (laughs) chat, in the premieres, it's all love because I think that we all want the same thing. We just don't Mm -hmm. agree on how to get there. So we all want a winner. We all want consistency. We all want to be a contender year after Mm -hmm. year. Uh, We want a Super Bowl. We want a Super Bowl win. We just don't, agree on the path because yeah. there hasn't been one since 1957. I got a contender. Yeah, you know, it, it, it is what it is. You know, we, and we appreciate, I mean, if we're the type of show who didn't appreciate your comments, we wouldn't do the premieres and have, you know, right. and, and have your comments on the show. So we appreciate your points of view. We may not agree with them, but it's times that Jim and I don't agree on things. It, it's just the way that it is. And, but we appreciate um, and we have uh, appreciate your opinion and appreciate you expressing that. And that way it just helps us grow as a fan base and understand one another. The world would be so much better if people just stopped and listened to each other. That's so, true. all right. So you know who we are. We are Detroit Lions of the Proud, your home for Detroit Lions news. Join us weekdays, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here for the premieres of our show. Join the chat live. Uh, leave some comments. If you want to get your comments in the chat right up front, do a super chat. And you'll get your comments right up front where you want them to be. And join the channel. Subscribe. Come on into the family. We really appreciate you. Uh, Comment, ring that, ring that notification bell so you know when you're getting fresh content from us right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Hey, it is Friday, people. Take some time to relax. This weekend, we got six. For the first time, we've had six, count them, six playoff games. That's going to be bananas. So enjoy some football. I know our Lions aren't in the fight, but just check it out as well. Hey, you, you, you can't go wrong watching some NFL playoff football. You know what you got to do. 
whatever you do in life, you got to step off up. Ball out and be the best version of you that you can be. From my man, Jim, right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon. <laughs>